ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my adorable co-host Teddy, and today we're doing a very interesting showdown. It's gonna be the Threadripper 1920X going up against the Intel i7-7820X. So, before we even get into this, I know you guys are gonna be like, what, what is this showdown? It's a 12-core going up against an 8-core. Uh, I did this because obviously I'm going to be doing a 1950x versus 7900x showdown and this is the next one down on the Intel side and the next one down on the AMD side uh, right now that is so I just figured I would check it out but as you guys will see it's actually really really interesting and a very interesting showdown probably one of the most interesting ones I've done in a while and I will be bringing price into the equation later on. But let's talk about these CPUs first, and we'll start with the 1920X. So this is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU, 3.5 gigahertz base clock, a 4 gigahertz turbo clock, and with XFR I saw it go all the way up to 4.1 gigahertz, and of course it is unlocked. The 7820X is an 8 core, 16 thread CPU with a 3.6 gigahertz base clock, a 4.3 gigahertz turbo clock, and a 4.5 gigahertz turbo max clock. And it is also unlocked. Now cache wise, the 1920X has a 32 megabyte L3 cache to the 7820X's 11 megabyte, so big difference there. However, the 7820X offsets this by having an 8 megabyte L2 cache to the 1920X's 6 megabyte. And one last thing to mention is that the 7820X is coming with 28 PCIe lanes to the 1920X's 64 PCIe lanes, so a big difference there. Now let's talk about the test rigs. So the 1920X was tested on uh, my new X399 MSI Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, which has been absolutely fantastic so far. The 7820X was also tested on an MSI board, but it's the X299 SLI Plus, which has also been really nice. Now both were tested with 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 quad channel memory at 3000 megahertz for all the tests, and both used the same Corsair H1 15i cooler and an ASUS Strix GTX 1080 Ti GPU. So with that being said, let's talk about the overclocking and the temperatures. And this one was also very interesting. So overclocking wise, the 1920X went up to 4 GHz on all 12 cores. And that's pretty much what I was expecting uh, given that it is still a Ryzen CPU at the end of the day. The 7820X went up to 4.5 GHz on all 8 cores, which is still pretty good. I mean, that's a big upgrade over the 6900K, which you would be lucky if you could take that thing over 4.2 GHz. Now, as far as temperatures go, you'll see that when I was testing them with Ida64 uh, for 5 minutes doing the CPU stress test, at their stock temperatures, the 7820X actually won, which is interesting because the 1920X is soldered down. However, once you overclock them, boy, does the 7820X get much, much hotter. And this is something we tend to see with a lot of the Ryzen CPUs, is that uh, their stock temps are actually uh, quite high, and uh, once you overclock them, uh, they, they don't go up that much more. Whereas the uh, Intel CPUs tend to be a bit cooler at their stock speeds, but once you overclock them, they get really, really hot. The 7900X is a perfect example of this. And also, uh, I wasn't being tripped up by the, uh, the temperature offset of the uh, 1920X, so don't worry about that. I made sure to check for that. So with that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
and we're back. So what do we make of those benchmarks? Well, the render times in Handbrake, that was really interesting. With them both overclocked, it was exactly the same. I was not expecting that. So a very interesting result there. The 7820X putting up a hell of a fight. And some of the other benchmarks that went in the productivity stuff, they went sort of blow for blow. Uh, but when it came to the gaming, the 7820X ran away with it. I was expecting that. It does have the clock speed advantage. However, most people won't be gaming at 1080p with these CPUs. I, I really wouldn't imagine. They would at least be gaming at 1440p, and you saw the 1440p results being very, very close there. However, what we take from the Cinebench results is that the uh, 1920X has that pure CPU horsepower over the 7820X, and that is to be expected as it is a 12-core CPU. Which brings us nicely into the conclusion, and we have to bring price into the equation. So right now, over at Playtech, if you want to pick up the i7 7820X, it's going to see you back 929 New Zealand dollars. And if you want to pick up the Threadripper 1920X, that comes in at 1279 New Zealand dollars. Now as far as the motherboards go, Right now, X399 and X299 motherboards are both expensive, as you would expect, because they got all the bells and whistles on them. Uh, so I, I can't really call it one way or the other. It really depends on which model you're wanting to go for. So let's just say they're around about the same, at least in New Zealand right now. That may change in the future. So what do we take from that? And which one is the better value? Because that's why I made this video. And this one is actually really tough for me to call. With a lot of these other tests, it's been quite easy to call it in Ryzen's favor because they're just much better value. But this time around, the Threadripper, the 1920X, is actually the more expensive CPU. And the 7820X still puts up a hell of a fight. So this one was really difficult for me to call. Personally, personally, I would still go for the 1920X because it seems like it just has that raw horsepower there. And I think with time, because X399 platform's brand new, uh, things will get better with BIOS updates and all of that good stuff. However, in saying that, the 7820X does put up a very good fight there, and it is quite a bit cheaper than the 1920X, so it is quite hard for me to call. So this time, I'm gonna kick it to you guys, the viewers. Let me know in the comment section down below, which one do you think is the better value? Would you go for the 1920X, which has uh, more cores and it also has uh, much more PCIe lanes, that's to be said. Or would you go for the 7820X, which is cheaper and comes with the higher clock speed? I really want to know. You guys let me know in the comment section down below because this one was actually very, very close. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video because it makes Teddy really happy. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.